horror genre of video games has gone through multiple evolutions throughout its existence. From traditional haunted house horror, to psychological and body horror like the Silent Hill series, to survival horror aimed at resource management and exploration such as Resident Evil, Signalis, and very recently, Crow Country. Check it out, it's awesome! In the past decade, we've seen the rise of indie horror, from RPG maker horror like Ib or The Witch's House, or even Ayo Oni to early PewDiePie viewers, to the rise of Itch.io Games, which is full of all types of horror games coming out every day, of uh, varying quality. And very recently, the mascot horror genre, which is composed of cute, marketable characters mixed with brutality and gore, typically in abandoned factories or children's restaurant locations, or abandoned children's restaurant location factories, ugh, such as Five Nights at Freddy's, Was that the bite of it? Poppy Playtime, Garden of Bon Bon, <laughs> and recently, Indigo Park, which had a fucking earworm of an ending song that has latched itself onto my cerebral cortex so it repeats over and over and over while I try to get shit done. But alongside the mascot horror genre, recently a new type of horror has formed. Born from the idea of unfiction, or the real world colliding with otherworldly entities and phenomena in a realistic and scientific way, such as the SCP series of stories or SCP Containment Breach, which are some of my favorite things and you should definitely check them out. It also involves video games which include real world elements, or ARGs, which can have embedded documents and YouTube videos used to build a narrative around a game, hidden in the game itself. I'm looking at you, Shipwreck64. I love it. Also, shout out to Rivi for letting me use some of her songs from the game, because I think they have incredibly creepy atmosphere, and I kinda love them. I listen to them in the car on the way to places. <laughs> this new genre of horror is called Anomaly Horror, where the player will travel through seemingly normal landscapes, either caught in time loops or under constraining time limits, and they will have to identify anomalies, or things that stand out in the environment around them, like creatures, stains, moving surroundings, missing items, uh, following eyes, and a bunch of other things. Some recent examples of these games are the I'm on Observation Duty series, the Stairway 7, the Exit 8, and Platform 8, which I will be featuring lots of gameplay of as I finally played them for the first time. And I might also include some of my commentary too, I'm just not sure yet. These games offer some very unique and creepy scares that I haven't ever seen before, playing on the ideas of repetition and subverting expectations after going through loops and loops of the same area. It seems like you never get the same anomaly twice in your playthrough, and some of the changes are so damn subtle I was filled with rage every time the counter would reset on what I thought was obviously the correct choice. Platform 8 keeps the looping room gimmick, but focuses more on in-your-face horror situations that you need to learn from and adapt to, like a grotesque figure slowly moving towards you if you keep looking at it, or water quickly filling the train car, forcing the player to make a break for it to the other end before they drown. These types of games are incredibly interesting and intriguing. They lower your guard by making you look at every minute object in the area, only to miss the creature staring at you dead in the face. Or the creature peeking through the crack in the door or even the creature that blends in with the tile wall behind it. Another great example of anomaly horror is Home Safety Hotline, where you answer calls from unsuspecting people dealing with anomalous entities and phenomena in their homes. Your job is to send out the appropriate response teams to deal with the problem, grounding the game in reality since that's what we do for every pest, bug, and animal that makes its way into our houses. I apologize to the baby raccoons in my roof. The fictional creatures are listed alongside common problems like mice and termites, seamlessly adapting them into our world with long detailed descriptions of their behaviors and effect on humans. There are some truly horrific anomalies in the game, specifically my favorite, the television mimic that eats small children and keeps them frozen stationary inside it, unable to be heard or found by their parents until they starve to death and are slowly digested. But uh, back to my main point. I think this genre is limitless, and it is only as restricted as a person's imagination is, because anything you think up can become an intriguing monster with a believable enough backstory and a set of core rules. Uh, for example, if I were to make a creature in Spore and name it Gargogort, uh, yeah, that works. If I defined what it does and how it operates well enough and it meshed well enough with our reality, it would probably work. At least I hope. I'm not really sure where I was going with this analogy, I just really fuck with Spore. This genre is also extremely adaptable. It can be paired with other genres quite well to further enhance the experience. 
In the Stairway 7, you go up 70 floors looking for differences in the creepy environment around you, while also collecting ammo and health items and fighting enemies along the way. This adds further challenge to the scavenger hunt dynamic and offers further replayability. It also can go well with psychological horror as the otherworldly scares and the repeating environments can go well with the ideas of purgatory and hell, tormenting the player as they go through cycle after cycle of torture. The games also have stark, lifeless environments that clash with the real world's busy noisiness, and I think that's great. In conclusion, I think that the anomaly horror genre has infinite potential and can offer some wonderful scares and very attentive gameplay that stimulates the player to constantly pay attention, almost training them to be aware of their surroundings. I think there is so much that can be done with this genre, especially when it's mixed with aspects of other genres, and I truly look forward to the future of anomaly horror. This is my first time playing the Platform 8, so I thought I'd record it and give any thoughts I had along the way. Oh, it looks good. I got a cat on my standing in front of my screen. Hold on. Okay, do I gotta remember where stuff is? It's the same dude! Ah. Maintain space. Six feet apart. Oh, you can see him in the reflection. That's cool. What? Let's try to memorize some of this shit. Oh god, it won't let me go back. Level one. This one seems to have less defined rules than the original. I don't see anything saying turn back if you spot an anomaly. What you looking at on your phone there? I guess let's try to push through. I don't really know what I'm supposed to be looking for. Oh. Uh-oh. Let me in. Level two. Do I just keep going? Oh, uh, don't know what to do with that. Maybe I just avoid her? Oh, uh-oh. Oh, fuck. I really do not fuck with this. What the fuck was that? <laughs> what the fuck was that? Level zero? This one seems to be more experiences with anomalies versus finding really, really specific little anomalies to win. This don't open, so I don't think I'm gonna open that. I don't really want to go towards that. <laughs> I really don't want to. Really cool. I'm gonna come by. This is a whole different experience from the original. Ooh. Keep walking, sir. Keep walking, you motherfucker. Oh, the reflection. He's still in the reflection. That's crazy. Level six. Oh, that actually scared me. Level seven. Almost done. Everyone's wrong here. Maybe an anomaly? I'm gonna keep running through, I think. That's really creepy. Level eight. I always check that little that little ticker box for instructions now. Ooh. Sure, we're here. We made it. That's the end. Yo, I beat it! beat it my third try. Probably could have done better if I'd paid more attention. But uh, yeah, that was the Platform 8. This was a great little game. Uh, I immensely enjoyed this series, and I look forward to any more anomaly horror in the future. So yeah, have a great day. <laughs> if you guys like this video, be sure to give it a like. Comment down below if you have anything interesting to say. And if you like my content, be sure to subscribe. Thank you. Have a great day.